the other basic concept we need in biology is something called allometric scaling. I think you are all used to the so-called isometric scaling where the things are proportional in every direction by the same amount. So if we look at two spheres, two circles, two squares or two cubes like this, any direction you look at the change in dimension is the same. But if you think of biology, how do you compare them, right? If you want to compare insects, each insect is a different scale. So if you want to somehow make rules about how they are growing, how fast they are growing, how their growth is affected by temperature or climate or pesticides and so on, we need to have some kind of a scaling. So we call it in biology as isometric scaling. So think about it this way, when you are a child, you have a certain length of your arms, legs, certain size of heart, lungs, brain. But as you grow older, not everything grows by the same proportions. Your hands and legs get longer and your lung gets bigger but not as big as your arms or hands. Your heart gets bigger but not as big as the lungs. Your brain gets bigger hopefully and so on. So this is called allometric scaling. Why does it matter? Because when you want to compare so many species that change in size, lifespan, growth rates and so on by so much, you want to have some kind of a scaling law it's called. So here is a good example of allometric scaling where it is showing a body mass which means if you take humans, what is the average weight of a human being? That's called body mass of human species. You can do this for a fly, for bees, for elephants, whales and so on. So we typically put it on a log scale because the range of body sizes is very huge. If you consider an ant for example and a whale, the scales are many orders of magnitude. So if you put it on a log scale, it becomes easier to plot. So on the vertical axis we have again in the long scale so-called abundance or biomass. What is abundance or biomass? Basically that means if you take all the elephants or all the humans, what is the total mass of the humans or the elephants? So the, the species overall weight is called the biomass or the abundance. So you plot them on these two axes and you can see that as the body mass gets smaller and smaller, the biomass or the abundance is higher and higher. It's a linear scale in the log-log scale, but if you didn't do it log-log, it would look something like this, which is called an exponential or a super exponential scale, okay? So we, what does this mean? This means that if you took all the flies in the world and weighed them, their weight is much, much higher than taking all the humans or all the elephants and their total mass, okay? So the smaller the things are, more their abundance is. This is a very good biological rule. Small things overall multiply fast, they are large in number, so it's unimaginable that there are so many flies, but essentially in the world if you took all, it, you can do it for anything, for bees, termites, ants, their abundance will be much higher than the larger uh, species like humans, whales, animals and so on. Which means even though human population is so high and whales are uh, so large in number, their number and their total weight is much smaller than those of insects. So in, in fact insects are the most abundant species on the planet. So this is a, a rule that we need to just keep in mind when we discuss biology. Mm -hmm.